So now I've made a uh, another version of this that's a little friendlier for visualizing it because we're going to run it in the Python visualizer. And so let me go through this. So it's basically the same algorithm. We test that the list is empty. We return zero. But what we do is we have variables that store the intermediate results. So we store the first item and item. We store the list that has the smaller list that where we take in the slice and rest. And then we return item one plus uh, the sum of the list, which is the uh, sum of the rest of the list. So this is the result of calling it on the smaller list. So when we run this in the visualizer, we can see what all these variables are, because it only shows that you what's in the variables. Uh, and then this is testing it, so it's going to do total and give it a list of numbers. So I'm going to copy this code, and I'm going to go to the Python visualizer. Uh, so I'm going to go to my browser, and I'm going to type in Python visualizer. There we go. And it's usually it's a popular site, so we're going to go to the first link here. And uh, paste that code in from the slide. And then we're going to test it. So we'll, we're going to see what it looks like when it does this. Okay, so we're about to, uh, uh, we're going to go forward. It should skip down to the first line of execution. So now it's going to, if we go forward, it's going to call some list with this list. So now it's created a frame for the function over here. So you can see some list, a list, which is the argument, points to the list. And then we'll go forward. And it checks is the length equal to zero. And if we go forward, you'll see it doesn't. It doesn't return. So it picks off the first item and puts it in item one. So now we have item one is just the value 10. And then it's going to call itself with a smaller list. So when we go forward, it's going to make a new stack frame. So this is called the call stack here. As it gets called, all the variables that are for a, a method get built into memory in an actual stack. And what's on the stack are all the local variables and parameters for that method. So every time this calls itself, it's going to create a new frame and it's going to recreate the variables for that particular call. So for this call, the argument is a list of only two elements. It's the last two of this call. And so we step. It's not empty. So it's going to pull off the three into item one. And then it's going to uh, call itself again. So now it's called itself again. So now it's been called with a list of just the seven on the list. And we go forward. It's not empty. So now it gets down to uh, the item one is a seven. And then it calls itself with an empty list. So you can see it calls itself the parameter points to an empty list. We go forward. And now it's empty, so this is going to be true, this if statement. So it's going to return zero, because that's the sum of an empty list. Now when it returns, it's going to return from this call that had it was the parameter's empty list to this call where the parameter had a list of seven. And uh, so now let's look at what happens when it returns. So what happens, it's going to come back from the return. So now it's uh, here, it's about to return. But what it returns, it adds item one to rest. So item one is seven and rest is zero. So it's adding zero from the empty list call to seven. And then it's going to return that. And now it's uh, going to re it's going to come back here because it just returned from the next call. So now you notice this stack frame is getting shorter. It's popping each one off. So now we have a list. The original argument was three seven, and it's going to add the three to what it just got back from calling itself, which is rest. So it's going to add these together. So we should get ten. So the return value of that's ten, and then it steps back. And now it's it's popped off one more call to stack, so it's approaching back to where we were. And so this this was the one that called with the three items, and so uh, it just ca it just returned rest, which is ten. And now it's going to add rest to item one, which was saved before we went down. So that's t also ten. 
and so we go forward and it adds those and it's going to return 20 and this is the 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 last time it got called so when it returns it's going to return to the main part of code down here and it's going to store it in total so we return and then you see total is 20 and we're all done so uh, the great thing about the visualizer, and I recommend for, it's only good for simple programs, uh, but you can look at concepts like this in the visualizer and follow what is happening step by step in memory until you have a really good idea of what is happening. Uh, so we did a few slides to show you the same thing. Uh, so on the left side here, we're going to have the calls and uh, we're going to show you what happens. So we're going to call uh, sum of, of, of a list of four numbers again. They're different numbers. And so when we call this inside, because the list isn't empty, it's going to take off the first number and then it's going to add it to a result from calling itself. So I just put a little empty circle here to represent that. So it's going to call itself with this new list. So the new list it's going to call to get the result will be uh, 357. So that in turn is inside the code for this sum is going to split off the 3 and then call itself with a new list that just has two items. And then in turn it is going to split off the 5 and then call itself with a list with just one item. And that in turn is going to call it with uh, the 7 and then a list with no items. And then that, that list is going to actually return a zero. So once it starts returning, it's going to start filling in this, and it'll do this addition. It's going to return and then fill in this and so on. So we're going to show you that. So first we're going to start going up. So now it's going to return the zero, which fills in the last expression of this call. And then this call returns the, the seven plus zero and oops wrong way it returns 7 plus 0 which puts 7 into that circle and then it can return 5 plus 7 up to here and fill in this circle and then it can return 3 plus 12 and fill in this circle and finally it, it uh, adds the 15 to the 1 and it gets the result so recursion involves going down a stack frame so as it calls is actually building in memory a frame of all these values and there is a special memory for each one to hold the uh, local variables the return amount and the parameters and then when it starts returning it's going to return those values and get used so it's going to go back up and that memory is going to go away as each method returns and when it's all done all the stack frames will be gone and you'll have the final result So let's look at an example of doing this. This is uh, converting a number to a string uh, in any base. So it's the same problem as we did in chapter three when we were using stacks, but we're gonna use recursion instead. So how we're gonna do it is if you look at base 10 and a number like 769, this is the same example as the book, and suppose we have a conversion string which has the, uh, the character zero through nine. So it's easy to convert one number so if we have a number that's less than 10, uh, then we can just look up which character we want to put in the string. So if we have a, uh, the number 9, we look up convert string of 9 and we get the character 9. So that's the base case, is when we get down to one number, we can just look it up in this conversion string. Uh, now to work toward the base case, we want to peel a number off of the original so we can we can peel a number off the front or the back, so we can take the, not, uh, not this number, the 769. So we'll probably be peeling off the 9, convert that, and then peel off the 6 and convert that, and peel off the 7 and convert that, and then build a new string that has all that in it. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, so what we can do to peel off, we can divide, integer divide of n will give us the last digit and if you do modulus 10 on the number, it gives us the 76. Well, let's, that's backwards. If you do the integer divide, it takes off the last number, so you get 76. And if you do n modulus 10, you get the last digit. So you can split the numbers in the two strings using those, the 76 and 9. So we're going to use those techniques. 
Uh, and it turns out what we are doing with base 10 will work with any base. Uh, so if we're working with base 16, we just divide n by the base. Uh, we're using integer divide, or we do n modulus the base to split off one, quote, hexadecimal digit in base 16. And then we use a little longer string for our lookup. Uh, so here's our final code. Uh, it's pretty short. This is a recursion, recursive way of converting from one base to another. So we have our digits, uh, which is a string to look up the character. And we have our base case, so if n is less than the base, so if, like it's n is less than 10, so everywhere you see base, think of 10 for kind of following how it does, and it's easier to think about it. Uh, if so, if it's one digit in our base, we just return looking up that character in our uh, string here. And that's the base case we're all done. We just do a return. Otherwise, we're going to return something, uh, but it's going to be the result of calling ourselves. So we call to string uh, with, uh, we've reduced n by one digit. So this divides. So if we had a three digit number, it would go to two digits and the base case. And this two string we get back from the smaller one we append the, the, the last digit, which is in modulus base, looking it up in digits, we append it using plus, concatenate the two strings together. So the string of the smaller problem, we then add to the right of it the single character. And that's it. Uh, it will keep recursing down and calling this until it gets down to one, looking up one character and then it's going to start returning and every time it returns this will, two string will return a larger number of digits in the final string and it will keep adding on the last digit that it saved uh, uh, so that it, when it returned it had that. So that's it for the first week of study and uh, for the second week uh, we're going to go into uh, some more examples.